hello students very good evening uh, I hope you are doing good how's how's things going on at your end had a hectic day how was it how was the day all in all today close this So today in the lectures I will be dealing with your stuff like cheap sequencing, chromo chromatin immunoprecipitation, uh, northern blotting, western blotting, southern blotting, northern western blotting and please uh, before we go download this software from this website pymol.org. Very good evening, very good evening, Bacho. So, firemall.org, also shared in the WhatsApp group. This is the for students who are attending this workshop on the laptop, so they can only work, work on it. But if so, whosoever are doing on the mobile, so it's not for them. You can watch it today, you can do it later, then you will have the recorded version. So basically PyMol software will help you to interfere with the protein molecule. You can check the protein structures. You can zoom in, zoom out, check various aspects of the protein. Uh, where the hydrophobic adhens, where the metallic bonds are there, where the catalytic subunit is. You can check uh, many things with that of a protein structure. So it's mainly done to check at the protein level. So this is the website uh, where you can find various proteins database this is pdb protein database rcbs.org here you can find the a four letter code of any any protein uh, data code here just type in then you can find it out we will go about that more in later and there are also some alternatives to pymol that is like jmol rasmol vmd if somebody is not interested with PyMol, they could also go for another. Yeah, I mean, you can put it uh, on the download until we go for the lectures. It will keep downloading and then just install it afterwards. So we will have a break. In the meantime, you can install it and then we can look for it. Yes, yes, from protein database from the PDB website, RCBS. RCSB. So from this website, you can also get the protein database. We will we will go through it at the end of the lecture. But as of now, I want to start your lectures with the chip, chip sequencing, chromatin immunoprecipitation, which is which deals with the DNA and protein interaction. How DNA and protein are interacted. To find it out, uh, there is a technique called uh, chip chromatin immunoprecipitation. So you uh, immunoprecipitate your proteins with DNA and then with the cross-linking with the reverse, cause, uh, reverse cycle, you remove the protein, then you have the DNA and then you sequence and amp amplify with PCR and then you check it. So that's uh, based on it. That's the basis of uh, chromatin immunoprecipitation. So, <clears throat> uh, students, uh, you have any other questions, further questions to start our lecture? Shall I start today? If you have any further questions, please feel free to ask. Okay, just type in and I will come by and then check your messages.
So I can give you five minutes to download this and save it in your computer. Firemall.org. So this I have to deal with yesterday but I am doing it tomorrow so it's day 6 that's why I written so so I'm starting with today's lecture that is chromatin immunoprecipitation principles uh, so as I discussed already um, what you do in the chromatin immunoprecipitations you check the interaction between DNA and protein so you have a cross linking you, uh, between your DNA and cells then you have a lysis of your protein then antibody uh, binding structure is done and then after the antibody immunoprecipitation is done you uh, immunoprecipitate both uh, DNA and protein together with the antibody then you remove the antibody with the wash steps and then you have a cross link reversal you do in which you just have your DNA and you amplify it with the PCR and then you can have DNA and protein analysis. So you can check the only DNA which has been attached to your protein uh, via antibody and then you can analyze them uh, with the help of DNA RNA protein analysis. So what is chromatin immunoprecipitation? So not only protein protein interacts with each other but sometimes DNA also interact with protein. So chromatin immunoprecipitation that is CHIP is a technique that determines whether the protein of interest interacts with a specific DNA sequence or not. So we just mainly check in this technique how uh, DNA and chromatin immunoprecipitation both comes together and they check your uh, your the interaction between each other. So this technique is often used to study the repertoire of sites of DNA that are bound of particular transcription factors of histone proteins. So we can also study uh, whether the on DNA any transcription factors are attaching or histone proteins are attaching or we can check histones modification also such as styylation, phosphorylation or methylation. So all these things are possible with the help of CHIP method. So how does CHIP uh, method work actually? So CHIP can be used to determine uh, the presence of protein DNA interaction at steady state or to quantify changes in the interaction at specific phases of cell cycle or following a treatment of interest. Protein and associated chromatins are temporarily cross-linked in live cells or tissues. So you cross-linked your cells or live tissues with the protein and chromatin and then either you shared them uh, uh, with the help of formaldehyde or by UV then afterwards you share them with enzymatic indigestion or go for sonication to have a fragmentation of your DNA around 300 to 1000 base pairs. Then later on uh, the protein of interest along with any associated DNA fragments are immunoprecipitated from the cells debris using a specific antibody. Then you immunoprecipitate them using a specific antibody uh, to have your associated DNA fragments with the protein of interest. The cross link then is reversed and DNA fragments are purified. The amount of eluted DNA can be assessed through quantitative uh, real time PCR, QRT PCR using primers flanking the genomic focus of interest. Then DNA amplification is done uh, to indicate the uh, enrichment in the binding of the protein of interest. So there are some modified technique in the chip uh, which are further used for uh, answering the various biological questions such as chip on chip technique in which uh, you have uh, genome wide analysis is happening. Uh, genome wide analysis of protein is done using a micro array to analyze the purified DNA fragments. Then chip sequence in which you do you check the genome wide analysis of protein. Uh, using the deep sequencing of purified DNA fragments. 
the native chip it omit the cross linking step and uses the micrococal nucleus digestion so we don't do not do the cross linking in this step we omit that instead of that in native chip we use the nucleus digestion with micrococal to cut the dna at histone linkers to examine the dna target of histone modifying protein so we check at the uh, histones which are modifying the protein uh, further in this case then chip exo addition of exonuclease digestion steps to obtain the increased resolution of protein binding sites up to a single base pair chromatin analysis by paired and n tag sequencing our technique uh, that is a technique combines the principle of chip with chromosomal conformation captures to detect long range chromatin interaction mediated by a protein of interest indexing uh, first chromatin immunoprecipitations a high sensitivity technique that reduces the number of cells required for chip experiments by initially barcoding total cellular chromatin then engineered dna binding uh, molecule mediated chromatin immunoprecipitation this is a technique which employs a crispr cas9 system to target a specific genomic region i guide uh, a guide rna complementary to desired genomic region so we have discussed about cas9 before also so this helps to evaluate cis trans trans transecting chromosomal looping events then the last technique that is rip chip or rip sequence which is analyzed to R protein and rna interaction mainly to check your protein and rna interaction so we do this technique so there are some limitations of chip technique so as of the molecular biology technique uh, it's without set of limitations so one of the limitations uh, that is that it has low yield signals so the yields are not so much less is limited to the resolution related to the size of dna resolution is also limited in this case so in this case chip infer with the presence of protein at given genomic locus it cannot determine functional significance of the protein binding at the dna region cross linking may be additionally include proteins that uh, transiently interact with the dna or dna binding proteins and have no functional significance similarly dna interaction of proteins with short residence times may not fully captured and at the end uh, proteins may mask the epitope of the protein of interest so some of the factors that are important i will discuss the main point at the end which is to conclude your control uh, what are kind of controls that you are using so one is igg control input control positive control and negative control igg control is done to appropriate non specific igg id added to instead of a protein specific uh, at the same concentration input control to save your cell lyse it by adding adding of antibodies to normalize for variations in the starting material between uh, consecutive experiments positive control locus uh, is a possible dna region where protein of interest is known to bind should be examined negative control focus if possible a dna region where your protein of interest is not expected to bind should be have tested so let's have a one video about this come in closer let me whisper something in your ear about chips seek yeah Sequest. Yeah. Hello, I'm Josh Starmer and welcome to StatQuest. Today we have a gentle introduction to ChipSeq. Note, this StatQuest is based on the gentle introduction to RNA-seq. So watch that first unless you're already totally down with RNA-seq. Okay, we've got a bunch of cells. Inside each cell, there's a nucleus. And inside each nucleus, there are a bunch of chromosomes. Let's focus on the chromosomes. Specifically, let's focus on these chromosomes. Chromosomes are made out of chromatin. Chromatin is made out of DNA, plus histones, a type of protein, plus other proteins that we'll talk about some other day. They're not that important for understanding ChIP-seq. DNA wraps around the histones to package DNA, and the packaging can regulate gene transcription. 
depending on how they are modified, histones can activate or repress genes. Lots more can be said about chromatin and how it's packaged, but that's for another day. Today we just need to know that chromatin is essentially DNA wrapped around histones. To simplify things, let's just use this big blue line to represent chromatin from here on out, but remembering that it's made of DNA and histone proteins. And let these big brown arrows represent genes. And let this green circle represent a histone that allows transcription. And let this red stop sign represent a histone that represses transcription. In a cell, all kinds of proteins can bind to DNA. This mustard colored thing might promote gene transcription of this gene. And this pinkish colored thing might repress this gene. And who knows what this green thing is doing? We can use CHIP-seq to find out. CHIP-seq stands for chromatin immunoprecipitation combined with high throughput sequencing. It identifies the locations in the genome bound by proteins. That's the most important thing in this stack quest, so I'll say it again, in bold. CHIP-seq identifies the locations in the genome bound by proteins. For example, say like we wanted to identify all the regions in the genome bound by the green thing. The first thing we do is use formaldehyde, or something like it, to glue all the proteins bound to the DNA together with the DNA. This means that all of the DNA bound proteins, including the ones we're not interested in, are glued to the DNA. The next thing we do is cut the DNA up into small, approximately 300 base pair, fragments. Then we isolate the protein we're interested in, in this case, we're interested in the green thing, using an antibody. The black star represents an antibody that is attached to a bead. Then we isolate the proteins bound by the antibody and wash everything else away. Then we reverse the formaldehyde glue by warming up everything. Then we isolate the DNA by washing away the proteins, including the histones. Now that we see how to isolate DNA that is bound by a particular protein, let's take a step back. So far, the example has focused on just these chromosomes. But the process, glue proteins to DNA, cut up DNA, bind proteins of interest with antibodies, isolate antibodies, unglue and wash away proteins, applies to all the chromosomes in the cell. And it is usually applied to a pool of 6 million cells, give or take a few. So we end up with a lot of DNA fragments from a lot of cells. Then, just like with RNA-seq, we prepare a sequencing library by adding sequencing adapters to both ends of the DNA fragments. Then, just like RNA-seq, we PCR amplify the library, check the library concentration, sequence, filter out garbage reads, and then align the high-quality reads to a genome. That is to say, if this is the genome, the first read might come from here, a location on chromosome 2. The second read might come from here, a location on chromosome 1. The third read might come from here, another position on chromosome 1. Etc, etc, etc. Ultimately, we get a long list of genomic coordinates for all the reads, usually between 50 and 100 million reads. And we can use those reads to create a genome browser track. These are genes and chromosome positions in the mouse genome, MM10 to be exact. This is the track that we created for our ChIP-seq reads. A lot of reads map to this region, and relatively few reads map to these other regions. This track was made from a control experiment. 
The control track was made by taking some of the input chromatin from the original ChIP-seq experiment. And, without using an antibody to enrich for any particular protein, ungluing all the proteins and washing them off. Then sequencing, aligning, and converting into a track. In summary, the control track uses some of the same input chromatin for the ChIP-seq experiment, but doesn't try to enrich for any particular protein binding. We use the control track to verify that a high concentration of reads in the ChIP-seq track is due to a protein binding there, and not because a lot of reads map to a repetitive region. Statistically significant peaks are usually represented on genome tracks by rectangular bars. We could then compare peaks for the same protein in different cell types, like lung versus kidney. Or, if we didn't know the specific DNA sequence that this green thing bound to, we could guess that it is a motif found in all of the peaks. Here's a motif found within the peaks that indicate where the green thing bound. The large letters are more frequently associated with the green thing than the little letters. We can also try to determine the functional role of the green thing by looking at where it binds relative to the genes. Here, we see that the green thing binds near the start of a gene, so it might regulate that gene in some way. Anyway, those are some of the things you can do with ChIP-seq. In summary, ChIP-seq identifies the locations in the genome bound by proteins. Bam! Hooray! We made it to the end of another exciting stat quest. If you like this stat quest and want to see more, please subscribe. And if you want to support stat quest, please click the like button and consider buying one of my original songs. Okay, until next time, quest on! So students, so that was a very um, nice way of, way of explaining all the things that how DNA and protein interaction could be done uh, and uh, how we can check with the different sequences of GAC, CTC at the various region of chromosomes where protein is being attached uh, with the help of this technique uh, with the protein and DNA interaction uh, via immunoprecipitations and protein antibody interaction also. So that was it. Um, On this note, we are done with this technique today, chromatin precipitations. So I will share this technique with you. Any questions, students? Yes, we will be using PyMol today a little bit. Okay, just write it down if you have questions. I will check them later. So I also share with you other things because they might take some time to get upload. So in meantime we keep continuing the lectures and they will be uploading.
so this is for you people proteomics not mbvt just keep in mind so i'm teaching these are the techniques which are both common in molecular biology and proteomics so that's why i'm teaching you these basic techniques so that we are able to understand how things are prevailing uh, in in nutshell okay basically we do we check the protein and dna interaction first uh, you do the protein uh, protein binding of dna then what with the help of formaldehyde then you cro then you add uh, immunoprecipitate them then with the help of immunoprecipitation you add primary antibody initially you add primary antibody then you immunoprecipitate them and then you remove with the reversible technique all the protein and dna out of it then after removal you add uh you with the part of dna that you fragmented you go for pcr and then with that pcr you can uh, for amplification in that part will be the part that was dealing with your uh, pcr so i have shared the files with you please go through them one more time uh, and then look for it So now comes the next part blotting techniques and which in which we have southern blotting northern blotting western blotting southern western blotting northern western blotting dot blotting and zoo blotting so southern blotting is a technique which is which is tend to understand about uh, dna interaction to see how dna is extracted to find out the dna amount in a particular sample northern is to check the rna western is done to check the protein where the southern western is done to check between uh, dna and rna uh, dna and protein sorry and northern western is done to check between uh, rna and protein interaction dot blotting is somehow a uh, modified version of western blotting whereas zoo blotting is a technique uh, done to check between various other organisms uh, coding and non coding region to differentiate between coding and non coding region you do that part so let's start with the southern blotting so southern blotting hybridization detects target dna fragments that have been size fraction by gel electrophoresis this technique was invented in 1975 by em southern uh, in this we first initially have radio label probe with a single stranded dna and if we want to detect the presence of specific sequence in our mixed dna samples then we accordingly design the probes which will have complementary sequence to our target sequence so in the procedure uh, what you do is you uh, so then blot you have a dna from sample is cleaved using the restriction fragments and then such as restriction endonucleases and then fragments are separated apart by gel electrophoresis and the double stranded helix of dna fragment is then denatured into single stranded by making the ph of gel basics the gel is blotted with a sheet of nitrocellulose transferring some of the dna strands to the sheet next a probe of consisting purified single stranded dna corresponding of specific genes is poured out so here you can see that you have your um, uh, le le electrophoretic gel on which your radioactive label markers with specific sizes are there and these are your test nucleic acids so electrophoresis is done and then you saw various nucleic acids then you transfer your sample over the nitrocellulose membrane then after the transfer of sample then you put your nitrocellulose membrane into radioactive label nucleic acids and then you rinse it then after the rinsing you have a photographic film which you could see on the paper uh, why radioactive bands being activated so these are the hybridized nucleic acids things so these are the concerned part that we were looking for
So further in the southern blotting, uh, we can get following information from technique of southern blotting. We can get to know about how many copies of genomes are present, degree of similarity between the chromosomal gene and probe sequence. Uh, we can get to know about the rearrangement of the cloning process during the cloning process. Uh, it could help to detect southern blottings has many uh, advantages, uh, many diseases and cancer diseases like monoclonal leukemia population, sickle cell mutations. It is also helped to have uh, DNA fingerprinting like genetic engineering, forensic sciences, paternity testing, personal identification, sex determination, species exclusion. So all these things are possible with it. So now let's see how southern blotting is done. So you first load your samples uh, with uh, treated with the restriction enzymes in 0 0.8 uh, TB gel. Then you run the gel. You add denaturating, denaturating solution to it, sodium hydroxide and sodium chloride. Rock in for 30 minutes. Then you soak your filter paper in transfer buffer 10x SSC. Put a nylon membrane on the gel. Cover the two sheets and remove any air bubbles. Then you stack towers and add some weight and put it overnight. So your transfer is done on the nitrocellulose membrane. You put in the 6x SSC uh, solution. You put on the UV transmitter to cross link it. Then you hybridized it in the buffer of SSC, D100, STS, Denature, DNA, all are added to it. So 
intubate for 42 degrees Celsius for 2 to 4 hours. Then you add your again hybridization buffer. And you just add this time isotopes uh, CTPs. Hybridize overnight. Remove the solution. Wash the membrane by wash buffer. And incubate for 30 minutes, 50 degrees Celsius, and you do it three times. Now your membrane is ready to expose. So this is special tray uh, which is done to check uh, your membrane. So that's it uh, from the southern blotting. This is how you do it. Any questions so far students? Uh, in which reference style should be references should be made in PPA paper? In the end note, anything that what whatever you specify. So they, I, I shared you already some papers, right? The where you can share your papers, the list. So according to that, just go for it. go with that so let's continue so northern blotting is the same technique uh, like southern blotting but instead of DNA here we have RNA so northern blotting is a simple extension of southern blotting derive its name from earlier technique it is a key technique in molecular biology, its principal uh, aim being the measurement of RNA. And RNA are separated by size and detected on a membrane using a hybridization probe with a base sequence complementary to all or a part of the sequence of target RNA. The procedure is done in a way that it is extracted from the cell of interest, but precautions must be taken to avoid the degradation of single-stranded RNA by ribonuclease which is found uh, on the skin and glass wares. So wear gloves using specially treated plastic glass wares to avoid any extension, accidental addition of fibronuclease to extraction prep. And also add diethyl pyrocarbonate depths to inhibit ribonuclease activity. Also baking at high temperature destroys ribonuclease activity. So we don't want ribonuclease activity in our samples because it will interfere with our RNA extraction so please take care while doing so. So RNA is isolated from biological samples, then they are separated according to the size of the agrose gel, then they are blotted on the nylon membrane. The membrane is then placed in the dish containing hybridization buffer with a label probed and then they are usually probed with cDNA fragments. The membrane is washed to remove unborn probes. The label is then detected using autoradiograph or via chemical emissions reactions. 
in both these cases results in the form of formation of dark band on the x-ray film so you see dark bands on the x-ray film so its method is similar like uh, like uh, not southern blotting but difference is that that we have extracted rna instead of dna in this case and we are measuring the rna uh, in the northern blotting so differential expression patterns of particular gene in which it is expressed uh, if it is expressed during certain stage of development uh, the quantity of mrna presence blots can be quantified accurately by radioactive counting whether a genomic dna probe has regions that are transcribed so they have various uses of of uh, northern blotting uh, they are used to detect size of rna to observe the alternate splice products to function of unknown proteins to know the uh, detect the cancerous pancreatic cells or tissues and to determine the gene expression pattern so these are the various applications of it so another video uh, for the northern blotting from the same lab formaldehyde agarose gel electrophoresis so in this you add rna formamide formaldehyde and mops so four solutions are added uh, initially into your sample Add your loading die. this is how you see your data so this is how you see your uh, results actually initially but we still have to transfer it to the nitrolysis membrane and step there is long step to go ahead then again the same steps will be done like what we did before
same methods like before hybridization methods I had isotopes, DCTPs. washing so this is a routine that uh, just main reason to teach you that whenever you will be in the molecular lab or biochemistry lab so these techniques will be on daily routine that you will be doing so i was doing western blots for three years uh, with other technology techniques also like ms ms uh, liquid chromatography co-minute precipitations uh, microscopy cell culture and various agros gel electrophoresis many other techniques so, but these main reason to show you these techniques is to just to have a feel of how a molecular lab is run how various techniques you have to go for on daily run so it's just like cooking your food like you add a plus b plus c some spices vegetables you made a tadka then uh, it's it's ready and then you have to have um, yeah rice or chapatis with it it depends so same way in the in this techniques uh, in the northern hybridization you need RNA in the southern you need DNA so according to that their protocols are changed as per the things are and then you just do it as a cooking so it's all about recipe and then cooking it uh, like that so now comes the next before we go let's check your questions why is RNA uh, side down while transluminating and does the DNA side have to be down in the southern blotting too? So RNA side down while transluminating? I didn't catch you, but So, if somebody knows, uh, please answer. Like a family, I couldn't get it. Um, then western blotting the western blotting is a analytical technique used to detect specific proteins uh, in a given sample of tissue or homogenate or extract sometimes referred to as immunobloating and then it was sometimes referred to as immunoblotting this technique used gel electrophoresis to separate native or denatured proteins by the length of the polypeptides or by the 3d structure of the protein other related uh, technique including antibodies to detect proteins in this tissue cell by immune staining and enzyme linked immune absorbent assays that is ELISA so main principle behind is that protein sample is electro electro oh, sorry electrophorized on SDS page and then they are transferred on the nitros, nitrocellulose membrane and then transfer protein is detected using specific primary antibody and secondary enzyme label antibody and substrate itself in this technique first of all sample of protein is, is separated on the basis of the molecular mass using SDS page then electrophoresis uh, moves the protein from the gel and onto the nitrocellulose membrane where the protein adheres so to detect the specific protein an antibody to that protein must be available the nitrocellulose membrane itself has many non-specific sites that can bind proteins including antibodies which must be blocked with the non-specific proteins solutions the primary antibodies added into the milk solution and bind to the protein of the interest 
the antibody protein complex is detected using the secondary antibody that has a label attached to it then you can watch it you can see it this uh, with the help of uh, lumophores or exophores or chemiluminescence to like to check your bands so this is your nitrocellulose membrane with attached proteins you had primary antibody and on the top you had secondary antibody then with the help of chemiluminescence or x force you check these antibodies location of the secondary antibody with the blue band on it so information that you get from the western blotting technique is the size of protein expression amount of protein and the uses of western blotting technique is mostly used in the medical diagnostic techniques that is a positive western blot can usually confirm a hiv infections the confirmatory hiv test employs a western blot to detect anti hiv antibody in a human serum sample and this is also used as de definitive test for bovine spongiform uh, and cephalopathy and western blotting is also helpful in the diagnosis of some form of lyme diseases so let's start with this uh, one video about that In this video, you will learn how to perform a Western blot. A Western blot can be used to identify specific proteins in a sample and provide information about the protein size and relative abundance in the sample. First, fill a tray with blotting buffer. You will be using this buffer to equilibrate your gel prior to starting the Western blot. Next, remove the gel from the gel cassette using the opening key. Line up the arrows on the opening lever with the four arrows on the cassette to open the cassette. After trimming the top and bottom of the gel with a straight edge, equilibrate the gel in the tray with blotting buffer for 15 minutes on a rocking platform. Pre-soak fiber pads in blotting buffer so that they are thoroughly soaked. To make a blotting sandwich, obtain a container large enough to fit the gel holder and add enough blotting buffer until the container is filled approximately one centimeter deep. Place the gel holder cassette in the container with the black side down and immersed in the buffer and the white side up and out of the buffer. Lay one fiber pad flat on the black plastic. Next, wet a piece of blotting paper and place it on top of the pad. Be careful to avoid any bubbles between the pad and the paper and make certain the buffer covers the paper. Take the gel and carefully place it squarely onto the blotting paper. Again, being careful to avoid any bubbles between the gel and the blotting paper. Next, you will be applying a piece of nitrocellulose membrane. Remove the protective sheet from the membrane and wet the membrane with blotting buffer. Carefully place the membrane squarely on the gel. Avoid moving the membrane once placed on the gel as proteins will begin to blot immediately. Using a roller, remove any air bubbles between the gel and the membrane. Place a second sheet of wet blotting paper on top of the nitrocellulose membrane. Place a second wet fiber pad on top of the blotting paper. Fold the clear plastic side of the gel holder over the sandwich and clamp it to the black plastic side 
by sliding over the white clip. This tight fit will squeeze the sandwich together. Insert the gel holder into the inner module. Make certain that the black side of the gel holder is next to the black side of the module. Place the inner module into the electrophoresis chamber. Add a frozen cooling unit and fill the chamber with blotting buffer to the level of the white clip on the gel holder. Place the lid on the electrophoresis chamber. Connect the electrical leads to the power supply, making sure the connections are correct, red to red and black to black. Turn on the power supply and run the blot at 20 volts. If a timer is available, set it for two and a half hours. When the run is complete, turn off the power supply and disassemble the electrophoresis chamber and remove the inner module. Open the module and place it in a container filled with blotting buffer with the black side down. Starting with the first fiber pad, remove each layer until you reach the nitrocellulose membrane. As you remove the membrane, note that the proteins have been transferred from the gel to the membrane. Note that the kaleidoscope pre-stain standards have been transferred and can be seen on both sides of the membrane. You can also see that there are no longer any proteins on the gel. Immerse the membrane in 25 milliliters of blocking solution and incubate it for 15 minutes at room temperature on a rocking platform. Pour off the blocking solution. Add 10 milliliters of primary antibody. Incubate for 10 to 20 minutes on a rocking platform. The platform should be set at a faster setting to ensure constant coverage of the membrane. Pour off the primary antibody. Rinse the membrane quickly in 50 milliliters of wash buffer and then discard the wash buffer. Add another 50 milliliters of wash buffer to the membrane and let it wash for three minutes on the rocking platform at a medium speed setting. Discard the wash buffer. Add 10 milliliters of secondary antibody and incubate the membrane for 5 to 15 minutes on the rocking platform at a fast speed. Pour off the secondary antibody. Rinse the membrane quickly in 50 milliliters of wash buffer and discard the wash buffer.
add an additional 50 milliliters of wash buffer and wash the membrane for three minutes on the rocking platform on a medium speed setting. Discard the wash buffer. Add 10 milliliters of substrate. Incubate the membrane with the substrate for 10 to 30 minutes with either manual shaking or on a rocking platform. Watch for the color development. Once the colors have developed, rinse the membrane twice with distilled water and blot dry with the paper towel. Air dry for 3 to 60 minutes and then cover in plastic wrap for storage. So that was the last video of Western blotting. What is the blocking? But a blocking solution is to block your anti your proteins on the nitrocellulose membrane, so that they should not go out of uh, get outside of your uh, membrane. That's why we add blocking solution to your samples. This could be yeah milk or anything else. In the video for northern blot, it was written that. RNA should be placed downwards in the UV transport while cross-linking. Why is it important to do so? Uh, sorry, I have no answers to that. Behind this, I should know actually, but sorry. I never did this technique, but um, I can tell you about uh, Western blotting a little bit, but sorry for that. So let's continue. Southern Western blotting, it's a combination of uh, Southern blotting and uh, Western blotting. It was first described by Bowen et al. and used to identify DNA binding proteins that specifically interact with the chosen DNA fragments in a sequence specific manner. So in this technique, mixture of proteins such as crude nuclear extracts or partially purified uh, preparations are first fractionated on a sodium dodecyl sulfate. During the transfer, protein denature and hence DNA binding proteins may subsequently be detected on the membrane by their ability to bind radio labeled DNA. The northern western blotting technique is a combination of northern blotting and western blotting, and this technique is used for the identification of protein RNA interaction in which protein is run on a gel, blotted, and probed with a labeled RNA of interest. Interactions are detected as a hot spots on the filter. Then dot blotting, it is a modified version of western blotting which is used for identification and analysis of protein of interest. Dot blot methodology uh, differs from the traditional western blotting technique by not separating protein samples using electrophoresis. Whereas zoo blotting technique, uh, it's, a, it's based on the principle of southern blotting. Uh, in this genome of any organisms, there are two regions, there are coding and non-coding regions. So it is the coding region that is uh, our main of core of interest. But the problem is that the most of the region of DNA are also non-coding. And reason is how to find out that region, large amount of non-coding region. So zoo blotting is precisely the answer. And you can distinguish uh, coding DNA of a uh, region of DNA that are uh, Non coding uh, regions. So, therefore, DNA is extracted from a series of related animals such as human, monkey, mouse, hamsters, cow, etc., and sample in the DNA that is zoo are each cut off with the suitable restriction enzymes and fragments run on the gel and transfer to the nylon membrane. And they are probed with the DNA that is suspected of being human coding DNA. Then they are only being uh, coded with the human uh, DNA which are coded with that. And then we compare with other related animals and based on that we can say whether that region is coding or non-coding. So here you can see that this is the region uh, when you code it with the coding regions. 
so this probe was known coding bind only to itself so on the left side uh, the probe that we have attached it was a known coding regions i didn't recognize other sites but only the human one Uh, whereas the probe is coding DNA, all species have related sequences. That is, uh, it will have a rat, cow, dog, human, and after cutting, we can recognize them. So that's it uh, for for all these techniques. Now, Pacho, please uh, open up uh, your PyMole software. Now we do the PyMole thingy. So I will uh, also open my PyMol. So this is my PyMol, and uh, maybe I open it from start. So. So first something about PDB, how PDB is important, I uh, will share that video about that. Macromolecular models are complex. So I hope uh, this was clear for all of you. Quite informative, something new for all of you. How you can make the use of uh, protein softwares? Yes, uh, Saga, you can use Chimera also by USS USC, UCMS. Uh, you can go ahead with that also. There are many softwares actually available in the market. But this was one of the software that I was using in my PhD to calculate my protein structures and to know the things. So I was using this method to do so. So on that note, uh, I would say that's it for today's lecture. Uh, any other questions, students? So we are done for today. So I have shared everything with you on the on the chip Western blotting PyMol or one soft one. Western blot soft uh, protocol. So I was using this protocol in my PhD. So I shared with you also this one. So that's it for today. Thank you very much. So tomorrow we will bring uh, bring you about uh, flow cytometry techniques, uh, something related to that. So looking forward to it tomorrow also. Okay, student, good night, take care, take care of your near ones and dear ones, and stay safe, keep smiling, bye-bye, good night. Sleep well.